Get ready with me while we prevent third or fourth degree tears and we also prevent the use of episiotomy for a woman that's coming in to have her baby who had a third degree tear and an episiotomy with her last birth and we're going to do everything in our power to prevent that from happening. So we're going to get our 300 mils of hot water and 300 mils of cold water and we're going to pour that into a bowl and then as you can see that head is crowning we need to give her some pain relief so we're going to hold that up over her perineum but this gets cold really quickly so you know what I do I get a menstrual pad and I peel off the sticky backing and then I fold it in on itself like this because menstrual pads are supposed to be absorbent and then I use this I put it into the hot water squeeze it out a little bit and then when I hold it onto her perineum oh it stays warm and it's going to give her some really good pain relief okay but that head's just not coming and she's been pushing for two hours she has a delayed second stage of labor She's had a third degree tear before and we're thinking there's no stretch because of the episiotomy scar, the third degree tear scar, there's no contractility. So we're holding on that warm compress, but then with the next push, we start to do my technique, the Taylor technique. We start to release those transverse perineal muscles. Then there's another push. We hold that warm compress back on again. That's it, give her lots of relief. Oh, so much stinging. So if we hold that menstrual pad on with the warm water, it's going to relieve that stinging and help present, prevent third and fourth degree tears, which is what the research has shown us. And now my research has shown that if we do myofascial release slowly and controlled until your finger slightly advances into the perineal body, the transverse perineal muscles will release and baby's head will be born. And for our woman who had an episiotomy and a third degree tear, she was intact and she was so happy.